very recently I was lucky enough to chat with Adam Gilmore. Adam is the head of Gilmore Space, a company he founded with his brother James that is well on its way to developing the next generation of rockets right here in Australia. After a few months of emails with the lovely Michelle Gilmore, I was able to line up an interview with Adam at Gilmore Space's office on the Gold Coast. Let me point out that Adam's office is less than five metres away from a working rocket factory. In this interview, we explore the reasons why he decided to leave a very stable career in the banking industry and how he managed to get that one past his wife, the recent awards he has received in additive manufacturing, and we talk about the recent launch anomalies and how from very early on, SpaceX has helped and continues to inspire him and his team. Hi, I'm Josh Keegan, and welcome to this episode of The Space Down Under, where I shine a light on what's happening in the Australian space industry. If you're new here, please click on the subscribe button. And while you're here, take a moment to check out my Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash Josh Keegan. It's time to grab a cup of coffee or at least your favorite beverage. And let's get started. Let me just say from the outset, Adam was a very relaxed interviewee. He's had a bit of experience. This interview has poor audio due to the fact we were sitting on squeaky chairs and there was air conditioning running in the background. There was also the moment where the mobile phone interrupted us, where Adam's brother James had left his mobile phone in his brother's office and it went off during the interview. Then there's the noise from the working rocket factory that was right behind where the interview was set up. I hope you enjoy this video as much as I did doing it. Poor audio, interruptions and all. So Adam, so why did you leave the banking industry, come and start your own rocket company? It's 2012, why? Because uh, I saw an opportunity and I spent enough time in banking. I yep. always loved space. And you know, from a business point of view, I saw a massive opportunity. I thought the industry was gonna pick up and I saw that there was a real slow, demand or slow ability of people to get to space. Like there wasn't a yeah. lot of rocket companies. Um, you know, everybody I talked to said, yeah, but it's a great idea, but I can't get it into space. Yeah. But I can't get it in quickly or cheaply. Yeah. So it dawned on me pretty quickly that access to space was the big thing, the big okay. bottleneck. Yeah, it is, it is. So we, did you take any inspiration from Elon or anybody like that? With the yeah, I mean, I started Dragon? getting interested in space before Elon, All right, but yeah. I was watching SpaceX and, you know, really gunning for them. And I remember meeting up with some SpaceX people in about 2010, when they still were kind of a bit shaky and these people were very nervous about, you know, whether they'd be taken seriously. And I said, I think you will be, and yep. I think you're going to succeed. And, you know, they've done very, very well. So, you know, Elon's definitely been egging us on. And, you know, oh. not, not, not verbally, but, yep. you know, we watch him and, you know, we, we get inspiration. <laughs> Yeah, fair enough. Um, all right, so I'm, I'm just curious. Um, like I'm, I'm married. I've got a couple of daughters and um, all that sort of stuff. Were you married at the time you made this decision? And, yeah. And how, what was that conversation like with your wife? Oh, it took a while. Um, it was just uh, an initial... Was that honey? I'm going to go off and build rockets? No, no, no. We we spent a lot of time researching it, yep. doing all the numbers, and you know, I basically presented a business plan to my wife and said, this is what I think. This is a business risk. plan? Yeah. Wow. This is the risk I'm going to take. Yeah. Um, you yeah, know, this is how we'll do it. We didn't like, I, I think the initial investment was about $300,000, and with that, we got quite a way. And then I said, I want to put more in, and she's yeah. like, okay. So we kept scaling up as we did well, yeah. Um, and then you know, by the time I was leaving the bank, I just said, Look, I did a spreadsheet of here's all the money I've saved this, I won't touch that, here's yeah. what's left to invest, okay. Are you okay? And she was like, Fine, wow. Yeah. Wow, that's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. Um, so I'm just curious as well. It's like, how did the conversation go with with James? With I know you and James have been interested in space for a number of years. I, I've read a little bit about you guys, but what was that conversation like? You just rang him up one day and said, "Look, mate, I'm sick of the banking industry. You, you know, do you want to do this? How, how did that work? Quite. So I was at my parents' house. Um, they lived in Sydney at the time, and yep. I just flown back on a business trip and I just said to my parents, my brother was there, you know, I'm thinking about starting a space business. Yeah. Um, and I'm probably going to do it. And, yep. and my mom said, 
oh, you know, James should do that. Oh, wow. And so then, from your mum. Yeah, but then James, I said to James, you know, what, what do you think? And he said, yeah, I'm keen. I'm really keen to do that. He was working for somebody else at the time, but he said, I'll, I'll jump and we'll, nice. we'll, we'll do it. Nice, that's awesome. So yeah, all right, awesome. So all right, you've um, you've had a couple of launch attempts. Um, so w can we talk about the first launch attempt? What ha what happened there? Did uh, it first work? One, did you did you get to a reasonable orbit? Or? Yeah, well, I think it orbit. Um, that one was just a tech demonstrator. All oh, right, yeah. To to show that we could do stuff. So what I noticed in my early endeavors was a lot of rocket companies talked a lot, had a lot of presentations done some ground tests of their motors, but never actually launched anything. Oh, right. Yeah. And you know, if you're, if you're developing your own rocket engine, that's already hard. Yeah. No. But if you then put it into a vehicle and launch it, oh, that's yep. way harder. Yeah. You know, the way I used to describe it is we had like a, a checklist of things that go into a uh, static engine test and it's one page of an Excel spreadsheet. When we went to do a launch, it's six pages. Wow. You know, so you could say it's like six times the, the complexity. And people was that? <laughs> I don't know who that is. Alright, we'll cut this bit out. Oh yeah, so yeah. the rocket test, so we put it all together, we went out five hours away from Brisbane yep. and then um, yeah, we launched, went to five kilometers and I was very happy because we put a lot of it together. We did it very quickly from Concept start to launch was nine months. Yep. Oh, wow. Yeah, so that's pretty insane. And yep. that was a fully developed engine. So we did a whole lot of engine tests, put it all together in our own oxidizer tank, uh, everything. Nine that months. was all your own. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Right. <laughs> this is all the stuff that gets edited out. <laughs> yeah, no, no, it's fine. I'm used to it. Yeah, I know you are. Yeah. All right, so yeah. so five kilometers. It was a, so it was a successful test. It was yes. a demonstrated test, and you yeah. went from nine months. All, so that was your own in-house engine and your own yes. in, in-built. Um, yeah, so we just did everything ourselves. All the technology so, ourselves. So I'm just curious. And this is probably a good um, segue into this. So. Why didn't you just go and grab something off the shelf like from NASA or ESA or JAXA or someone like that with one of their solid, proven solid rockets and launch one of those? It, was there a need to do it Australian based or make it yourself? Because I know you've won an advanced manufacturing award. Mm. So, you know, what, what was the motivation behind, um, you know, not using someone else's tech? Uh, one of them was expense. So we yeah. did look at that. So, um, you know, a decent solid rocket motor out of the States would cost us about $18 million if we did a stage vehicle. Ow. US. Yeah. So I kind of thought, you know, I can develop the whole vehicle for that much money. Um, the other thing is uh, solid rocket motors don't give you the same performance as you get out of a hybrid or a liquid. Yeah. So, you know, we wanted to have a, a system that was simple, uh, but a lot more high performance, and that's what hybrid rockets can do versus solids. Yeah. What does that mean? That just means if you have a vehicle that's 10 tons, you know, you can take 150 kilograms into orbit with a hybrid rocket and take maybe 40 kilograms into orbit with a solid rocket. Oh, so wow. You yeah, end up that's massive difference, yeah. yeah. Massive vehicles if you use solid rockets. Yeah. So what, so what sort of propeller are you using? You've got an oxidizer and you've got what else that is in there that actually, you know, gets you into, because you're talking about liquid fuels and hybrids and all that We've got stuff. a liquid oxidizer yeah. and then we've got a solid fuel. And oh, the, solid fuel. The fuel's proprietary. It's, a, it's oh. a, a system that we've spent a lot of time working on and developed over the years and it works pretty good. It's kind of related to plastic. <laughs> <laughs> that's right, I'm not gonna ask any more questions, it's proprietary, so that's not a problem. All right, so in regard to the second test um, and the, what happened there, I've seen a bit of footage on the internet and I'll show some of these points. So, um, so what happened with, with that particular test? Yeah, in a, in a nutshell, we set up a system when we tested it on the ground and we wired in sensors a certain way yep. and then for some reason, and we don't really know why the decision was made, there's a logical step, yep. we wired it differently. So when we wired it differently in, the signal was getting received, yep. but it was taking longer to receive the signal. So when the pressure started to increase from the helium tank into the oxidizer tank, yep. the regulator thought it was filling slower and oh, opened up more. So yep. the oxidizer tank filled up quicker. Yep. So you've got like a brain here saying, okay, I'll let more in, I'll let more in. And it doesn't realize because the sensor's too slow. Yep. I've let nothing, I've let nothing. 
So, so what's the, what's the result for that? What, what, what's the the fix? Is there like a better sensor, a different way of wiring? No, just basically a, a methodology of test what you fly. Yep. So, you know, when we've employed a lot of senior rocket engineers in the last six months, they all have this mantra: test what you fly. So, if you intend to fly a system network, yep. test it on the ground in exactly the same way as you as you fly it. Oh wow! So we tested like ninety nine percent the same, but yep. that one percent difference made the difference. Oh yeah, well it is rocket science after all, you know. Yeah, and you've got to fail fast, fail forward. So do, do we have, a, there's terminology that they use in the United States like a rapid unscheduled disassembly and all that sort of stuff. Do we have those terms here in Australia or do we use We kind of do, right? you know, we still use the word anomaly. Yeah, um, oh good. <laughs> yeah, but we, we didn't have a, a massive explosion or anything like that. Yeah. We're always saying hybrid rockets are a lot safer yeah, because the are. two Materials are in different phases of matter, so they can't combine and have an explosion like a liquid or a solid. Yep, okay. So, you know, we had a full oxidizer tank rupture, yep. which in a, in a liquid vehicle would be a catastrophic explosion, yep. and we had a steam cloud come. Wow. Um, you know, so that's, that's the best end result. Absolutely. So extreme minimal damage to our yep. uh, mobile launch platform, yep. no damage at all to any personnel. Um, you know, so that's what you want to have. Yeah, exactly. That's a safer solution. It is. All right, so you've got this advanced manufacturing reward. Was that actually to you yourself or to your more technologies? Space I technologies? think it was to me myself. Yeah, okay. So what, what sort of advanced manufacturing are you using? Is it 3D printing, laser centering? What, what is it that you we use? Did, we do tons. So we do film and winding, we do 3D printing, we do CNC machining. Oh, wow. So our rocket is just a hot box of advanced technology. Okay, and it's all developed here in Australia, which is Mostly, okay. yeah, yeah, pretty okay. much all of it. Awesome. So when it, when is the next launch? So um, I, I know you guys are you've had your failures and there's we talked outside about you know you're not being able to recycle some stuff because you need to start from scratch. So what happens from here? Is it bigger is better? Are you trying the same size with one vision? Are you going to the Eris? Is it Eris? The Eris? Eris? Yeah. yeah, Eris. Sorry, Eris. Sorry, I always get it wrong. Um, so what's what's happening from here? The next major flight milestone we have is we're going to take the third stage of mm -hmm. a three-stage orbital vehicle and test it as a single unit. Oh, okay. So that'll be like 99% the same as the first, uh, the third stage on the orbital vehicle. Yep. That'll get to 100 kilometers, so we'll be able to test everything in space, the engine, all the avionics, the reaction control system, thrust vector mm -hmm. control, the whole nine yards. Yep. We'll be able to test it. Um, so that's Up to 100 case. Yeah. yeah. So that, you try and pass the carbon line? Yes. Nice. <laughs> I can't wait for that moment. It's been a long time since we last did it, let's face it, 1967. All right, so um, so when will this new rocket be ready for testing? Is uh, it 18 months. 18 months? Okay, that's excellent. That's that's massive. So um, with all the, um, I noticed you've got some high fidelity simulators and all that sort of stuff. So what's the point behind the high fidelity simulators that you've got? We started two companies at the same time. Yep. So one of them was like a space education company and one of them was a rocket company. So yep. The simulators are for the space education company. So we built those ourselves. Yeah. So a lot of the people that built those moved on into rockets. It was a good learning curve. Yeah. Uh, and now, because we shut down the Space Academy, they're, they're waiting here. But we are talking to the space agency and a couple of other people to reuse those. Oh, wow. Which would be good. Not, yeah, that'd be really, really good to get kids interested in space. That's fantastic. Yeah. So I've got, I've got a couple more questions. So why the Gold Coast? Uh, I mean, you said you were you were in Sydney, all that sort of stuff. Is it, are you originally based from the, from the Gold Coast? Is no, the, the whole reason was we set up two companies, as I said. Yep. One of them was a tourism company, and we yep. had to look at like where's a good place <laughs> to have a tourist, and this yep. is a great place to, to have anything related to tourism. Yeah, it is. It is. And then we started the rocket company, and then you know we moved here. Everybody moved here. No better place to go, really. So we just stayed. All right, that's that's awesome. Um, so can I ask about where you were launching from? I know it's five hours away from, from Brisbane. Is Can you say where that no, was? No, where we launched from last time was Bullia. Bullia, Which okay. is a lot more than five hours away. It's 20 hours away. Wow! <laughs> That's a long way away. Yeah. So are, are you going to fix launch location as yet or are you just waiting for that? that the before? next launch will be in South Australia. So okay, the yeah. South Australian government mm -hmm. and a private company are setting up a launch site down in Wales Bay. Yep. We're going to launch the next rocket there and probably the first three orbital vehicles from there. 
Okay, cool. And how long will the first three orbital vehicles take? I mean, you're talking 18 months for the first um, the third stage. Yeah, a year yeah. later for the first orbital yeah. vehicle. And then when we look historically at other rocket companies, they seem to do, they have a, like a other ones, month. Other ones, are, like this up here, the moon landing and stuff like that. Uh, well, they move fast and NASA moves very fast because yeah, they have tons of money. But yeah. if you're if you're like a you know, venture-backed company and you've got to conserve money, yeah, what we've seen is roughly nine to 12 months of the first after the first launch is the second one, yep. and then roughly another nine months is the third. So if we want to stay conservative, that's what we'll do. If we can go fast, of course we will. Of course, of yeah. course, and it depends on how much investment you actually get. Yeah. So your investors are obviously still supportive after your first two um, anomalies. They're still actually backing you 100%. Yeah, we've only had one anomaly. Oh, one anomaly, sorry. The third, the, sorry, after the last anomaly. So that last anomaly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, what's the, what's the future vision for for Gilmore Space Technology? What exactly is it? I mean, we uh, in September 2019. So for us, that was overnight. Um, the Australian government has announced 150 million dollars investment into Australian companies in terms of space, and we're joining the US in the Artemis program, NASA's mission to get um, the first female astronaut to the moon, as part of many other things. So what does that mean for a company like Gilmore Space? What does that mean long-term? Yeah, well, our long-term vision is planetary exploration. So yep. you know, we are designing a vehicle that can take payload to the orbit of the moon, to the orbit of Mars. Wow. So uh, we would love to be able to do that. Um, it'll be a stretch for us to get it done by 2024, but I think if we get some money yep. and we can speed things up and we can do it. Yeah, excellent. All right. Well, I think I've run out of questions. So if anybody wants to uh, actually help Adam, please feel free to do so. Reach out to Adam directly. And if you're an investor or um, venture capitalist or something like that, Adam is certainly the person to talk to. Um, in terms of jobs, you still guys are still hiring um, engineers and things like that? Here we are. We've hired a lot this year. Probably yep. hired 20 people this year. Oh, nice. And uh, next year we plan to hire another 10. Yep. So we're still looking for people. All right. So if you need a job in the space industry, Here's your man. All right, well, thank you very much for your time there, Adam. It's My been pleasure. a pleasure talking yeah. to you. Nice um, to meet you. Thanks very much for taking time out of your busy day to have a chat. Great. All right, thank you. Cool. If you enjoyed this video and my chat with Adam Gilmore, please leave a comment below. If you want to invest in the Australian space industry, especially Gilmore Space, I'll place a link in the description below. Reach out to Adam or James and support an Australian rocket company. I also have a Patreon page where you can help me out with upgrading my video audio equipment, as I'm always trying to bring you the best level of video possible. You can also get exclusive insights into upcoming videos and help me out with scripting and fact checks. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel as I have a ton more videos coming up and more around aerospace, drone, technology, and coffee. If you work in the Australian space industry, please reach out to me via joshkeegan.com as I'd love to know what you're working on and feature it on the Space Down Under. Thanks very much for watching, and remember, stay caffeinated.